Okay, so welcome back to another video. So here we have an infinite sum we would like to calculate. We have that our index starts from n is equal to 1 and then all the way up to infinity of 1 divided by n squared times pi squared plus 1. So there's actually a lot of ways we can actually solve this, but the one that I like specifically is that we will be utilizing some hyperbolic functions to evaluate this. So with that being said, actually the first thing we will want to utilize is the definition of Euler's infinite sine product, which um, for the sine function of x utilizes a infinite product series of definition that I actually covered the whole you know proof behind that from some old videos years ago. If you want to check that out, I'll actually leave that um, video in the link in the description below for the whole whole derivation. So utilizing that and not only that some complex numbers will be utilized to do in in a sort of substitution to actually you know solve this um infinite sum um not too much needs to be done i just like this whole sort of like transformation that we will be using it's not in a way that you would think we, we would want to solve it for but it actually comes out the way very nicely and to the result that we want to solve for so with that being said why don't we actually just jump right in so up first, we will utilize um, Euler's infinite sine product, which says the following. We have that sine of x is going to equal to x multiplied by the infinite product series of n is equal to 1 of our, um, the infinite product we're dealing with is 1 minus x squared divided by um, n squared times pi squared. And then another thing we will be utilizing is that we're going to let sine of x, we will use its complex exponential um, definition, which says that this is the same thing written as e to the power i times x minus e to the negative i x divided by 2i. And then we still set this equal to the left hand side over here. So x, the infinite product, n is equal to 1 of 1 subtract x squared divided by pi squared um, times n squared, n squared times pi squared. I right? had it backwards, but that's okay. Okay, so with that, all right, so now moving on, why don't we actually, you know, utilize the substitution as I mentioned. What we're gonna do is we're going to let x equals i times y. So over here, um, x equals i times y. So from both sides, I should have put that rather, or yeah. And then, so with that being the case, if I solve for um, x by itself, then that means I, I have to plug all this back in and then now we have the new definition or not really the new formula in terms of y algebraic expression written rather is that we're going to have e to the power y and then subtract e to the negative y and then divided by 2 um, and then equals to y so actually because that i have a um, x so i times y so that i divide by the i to both sides that will get rid of the i well rather it becomes a negative and then i'll actually interchange the two um the numerator together so we can actually switch that around and then we have y then multiply by the infinite product so n is equal to one of now one and then this will be changed to plus y square divided by um n squared times pi square okay so with that moving forward so notice that the left hand side we can actually use its definition of the hyperbolic sine function so the hyperbolic sine of y is then equal to y times this infinite product over here so same thing and it's equal to one one plus y squared divided by n squared and then pi squared okay so with that being in mind, why don't we now actually then take, assume by also by the continuity of all this, let's actually take the natural log of both sides. So now I have the natural log of the hyperbolic sine of y is then equal to, so take the natural log of this entire thing, so it's a product, so now I can actually, by utilizing the definition of the natural log, it's a sum of natural logs. So now I have the natural log of y, and then add this with the natural log of this entire thing, the infinite product of uh, n is equal to one to infinity of one, then plus y squared divided by n squared pi squared, okay? Then we can close that off. Okay, so everything we have here, so um, so far we can't do much with the left-hand side. However, there are some things we can do with the right-hand side specifically. So with that being the case, you'll notice that if I take the natural log of this entire infinite product series, utilizing by the continuity, the definition of the continuity, that same thing can be written as the following. So let me first write the left-hand side. So this is still the natural log of the hyperbolic sine of y equal to the natural log of y. Now this is going to change such that this is going to be an infinite sum of the natural logs. So plus the infinite sum 
n is equal to one of the natural log of this entire thing. So one plus y squared plus uh, n squared and then pi squared. So with that being the way, so now let's actually take the derivative of both sides in respect to y. So dy, then the natural log of hyperbolic sine of y, and then set this equal to, so take the derivative in respect to y of the same thing over here. So natural log of y, add this with the infinite sum, and is equal to one natural log of one plus y squared divided by n squared, then pi squared. Okay, so we know by, um, the definition, or really, the we know that it's derivative, the natural log of hyperbolic sine of y. We know that the, this is going to be 1 divided by the hyperbolic sine of y, but what is the derivative of the hyperbolic sine of y? It's going to be the hyperbolic cosine of y. Uh, make sure not to get this mixed up. This does not follow that same rule with a cosine sine where you have to, you know, implement the negative sine of that. That's not, um, this is completely different from the hyperbolic compared to the trigonometric. So with this, I now have the hyperbolic cosine of y divided by by a hyperbolic sine of y, then derivative of this entire thing I have is one divided by y, and then add this with, so take into the respect of y of inside our infinite sum over here. So now I have the infinite sum at n is equal to one of, so one, and then divided by, so the natural log of this entire thing rather, so there's gonna be one divided by one plus uh, y square, then n square pi square, then multiply with its derivative of the inside of the natural log argument, which that's gonna yield us two y and then times n square pi square, okay? So with that being the case, we can actually do a little bit of some substitution on this right-hand side, but also um, the hyperbolic sine of y and the uh, hyperbolic sine of y, we can actually go back and utilize its complex um, its complex exponential um, definition, which that can be the same thing written as e to the power y plus e to the negative y divided by uh, e to the power y subtract e to the negative y. Okay, so now I'm gonna have, so one divided by y, and then substitute the two outside of the infinite sum, so two times the infinite sum at n is equal to one, and then we actually, um, Simplify the things down below over here. We're gonna have this is gonna be y and then divided by n square pi square and then plus y square. Okay, so we're just about um, just a few steps away to achieving our you know final answer here. We can kind of notice that we're kind of getting a similar form to what was given that we want to solve for, as you can tell. So now let's actually do yet another plug in some values. So why don't we let y equals one? Okay. So by doing so, we're gonna have, so e and then one and then plus one divided by e on the bottom, e minus one divided by e. Okay, then on the top, I'm gonna have one and then plus two, then now I actually plug in um, one for everything over here, the infinite sum at n is equal to one. So that means I have one divided by n square, pi square and then plus one. All right, see, we have something similar over here, so we're almost there. Now we just have to make sure we just get this by itself, which it can clearly be done. So continuing forward, so why don't we actually multiply the e to both numerator and denominator, just so we can get rid of that denominator of the one over e from over there. So doing so, that's gonna yield us with e squared plus one, then divided by e squared minus one, and then I'm gonna subtract the one over here, so minus one, and then it's equal to two times the um, infinite sum over here. So n is equal one, one divided by n squared pi squared, and then plus one. All we have to do is just divide two. So now next thing is just get a common denominator by itself, but I'm actually gonna skip the entire step because doing all this is pretty self-explanatory. After you divide the two, you can easily check this for yourself, but we're gonna get that the final answer. So our infinite sum that we can actually get by itself n is equal to one of one divided by n squared pi squared plus one is indeed just going to simply yield one divided by e squared subtract one. So with that, that is our final answer to our infinite sum using the um, hyperbolic functions approach, actually using a bit of calculus, using some derivatives and uh, utilizing, of course, the first step of Euler's infinite sine product, yielding such a beautiful workload and getting to this result that you know clearly can be solved for any other ways you want to do it, but this is probably the most um, beautiful way to do it. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.